Don't miss out on our new videos by subscribing Logic Heap and pressing the bell icon. Hello friends, welcome to Logic Heap. In the last tutorial, we discussed about hashing. In that tutorial, we also discussed very minimally about collision. Here, we are going to start from there. So, collision, let's just revisit what was the problem. You have some data given to you, you have key value pairs and you need to create a hash table out of it because you want to make search faster. So these are the keys, these are the values. Now these are the arbitrary keys. To make it fixed size, fixed size keys, we use hash function. So here hash function we are using as key modulo 7. So whatever could be the keys, ultimately when we use the hash function, this will be a fixed range from 0 to 6 because we are using modulo 7. So whatever be the result, it will come between 0 to 6, right? Suppose we give 10 here. So 10 modulo 7 is 3, okay? So what we'll do, we'll go at 3 and whatever value we'll put it here. It's logic, okay? Next is 11 RAM. So 11 modulo 7, which is 4. So we'll go at 4 and we'll put RAM here. Then we'll go to 14, 14 modulo 7. So it is 0. So in that case, we'll put Jyoti here. Next is 17, 17 heap. So 17 modulo 7, which is 3. So here's the problem. This place is already occupied. And now I want to keep heap here as well because the hash value of both are same. So this is bound to happen when you are having arbitrary size value and when you are limiting it to fixed size values, it is bound to happen that there will be collision. So we should use some method to handle these collisions. In this tutorial, we are going to use a very famous method to do this, which is called separate chain method. Separate chain method is really easy to understand. Here we were earlier keeping values, right? So instead of keeping the values, consider this as the container. Container 0, container 1. Now you can implement container in many ways. One way could be you make a list here. So at 0th place, here we have a complete list to maintain of those key value pairs which, are, which have the same hash value as 0. Okay, so let's take an example. Here we have 10 and logic. So 10 modulo 7 is 3. So it is going to come here. Okay, here we will maintain a list in itself of all those key value pairs whose key is hashing to 3. So the first element that we will insert here is key is 10 and value is logic. Okay, next we will insert this, this, after that we'll come here, 17 heap, 17 modulo 7 is 3. So again, we come to the same hash. At index 3, in this list, we'll append one more value, which is 17 heap. If one more value comes, we'll insert here. Okay. So at each place, we call it as bucket or container, we can insert all those key value pairs which are hashing to the same index 3. Okay, so this, this thing is called separate chain method. Now suppose you need to search for value 17 here. So what will you do? You will do 17 modulo 7 which will give you 3. You will go at index 3 and you will start traversing all the values. You will compare with this value. If the key is matching, no. Here the key is matching. It was 17, we need to search for here it is and the value is heap. So that's how you search for a value. Now see this, this list should not be very long. Suppose if this list becomes the size of the input, then it will become, the search will become of order of n. Okay, suppose n is the input size, then it may become order of n if your hash function is not good. Suppose it has mapped all the values to one particular index, then the search will become really bad here. 
So that's why in the last class I was saying that your hash function must be really good so that it distributes the data uniformly. So this is your separate chain method where every index is considered as a bucket or a container which you can implement using a list again and in that list you can put all the key value pairs which are hashing to this particular index. Now before jumping to the implementation of separate chain method in Python, I want you to know two important concepts in hashing. What are those? One is load factor and another is rehashing. Now in separate chain method, if there's a good hash function, let's suppose it's, it distributes the data uniformly. You have such hash function. Suppose here we were having seven places earlier, key modulo seven. This was the example we are taking. So here we had seven possible places where we can insert our values. Okay. This input size currently is only six. Now let's say if we increase it to 14 values. Suppose the input size now becomes 14. And if it distributes uniformly in that case, at each place, Around two values will be there. So bucket will be having two values at each place. Okay, because in total there are 14 values, 14 key value pairs and we have seven possible places. So at each place we'll have two values. Similarly, if we increase the input size more, the bucket size will increase. Okay, if we make it 21, there'll be three. If we make it 21, the bucket size at each place would be nearly 3. So the concept here is load at each bucket should not be much. And what the general rule we follow is that at each place there must be only one value. Okay, so the load factor is, we denote it by lambda, it is the ratio of input size, okay, and your capacity, the hash table capacity. So it, I'm denoting it as n, n here is 7, okay, and n, suppose earlier it was 6, right? So it was 6 by 7. In general, we follow the rule that lambda should be less than 1. So that is in general rule. In fact, the implementation that we'll be doing we'll keep lambda as 0.5. So this is the lambda or load factor, which gives you the ratio between input size and your capacity. And we try to make it as less than one because we want to perform the search operation in constant amount of time, which is big O of one. Now, suppose input size is increasing you created a hash table now input size is increasing more data is coming in more key value pairs are coming in you have already created a hash table of size 7 okay so what you should do if its load factor is increasing beyond the threshold that you have set okay in that case you increase your size of hash table you increase its capacity so let's say it was key modulo 7, you are going to make it around double key modulo 13. Okay. Now you will rehash all the values that you have stored. Okay. You will again hash all these values using this hash function key modulo 13. This is called rehashing. Okay. So these were two terms load factor and rehashing. When load increases, we rehash all the values using some compression function or your hash function. So earlier, just like this, we have key modulo 7, we increased it, we increased the capacity to key modulo 30. So in this tutorial, we covered a collision method, which is separate chain method. There we also discussed about load factor and rehashing. Now using all these things, we are going to implement separate chain method in our next tutorial. Thank you.